So our previous works have shown that several factors affect and influence the success of restorative procedures. One of the main factors appear to be the presence of bacteria along the walls of the dentin and along the restorative material itself. So the presence of bacteria may go through the dentin tubules to the pulp and um, this way we can get an inflammatory reaction and this decreases the reaction of the pulp to future um, carious injuries. So, um, eliminating the bacteria appears to be a major element. The second element is the capacity of the pulp itself to respond by secreting a reaction in redentin, that is, a dentin regeneration in the pulp itself to um, decrease the bacterial infiltration. And this depends on different factors. One of them is the remaining dentin thickness, that is, the deepness of the cavity, but also uh, the capacity of secre secreting the, re the, react the reaction redundant. So, um, when um, the patient goes to the dentist and the carious dentin is removed, um, restorative material is placed and around the restorative the material, bacteria might infiltrate the cavity and reach the pulp to induce um, an inflammatory reaction. And this has to be absolutely avoided. So the successful therapy of this type of restoration is that the material itself has to be uh, non-toxic but it has to provide a hermetic seal in such a way that no bacterial leakage can reach the pulp itself. So um, in the present um, work that we are going to show today, we in fact evaluated two aspects. The possibility that Biodentin has to provide a hermetic seal with the dentin tissues and the, the enamel tissue from one side and the other side is to know if the pulp can maintain its capacity to regenerate a hard tissue facing the injury site. So in order to do so, we prepared class 2 cavities in experimental groups and these cavities were treated with biodentin, but with other materials, mainly the golden standard, which is um, the glass or cement. Um, uh, the materials will, were applied as um, filling materials or as liners, together with different bonding agents to see if we can apply different uh, materials successfully over uh, biodentin. Uh, the results we obtained show that Biodentin provides a perfect hermetic hail, whatever the material applied, applied on top of it. And this was the case on the dentin or the enamel side, but also between the materials themselves. Then we examined another aspect with this material is uh, its behavior in artificial saliva. And surprisingly, while we were um, trying to check if there is any solubilization of the material, we notice that there is a precipitation of crystals on the surface of this material and on the uh, um, junction with the, um, with the recipient border. And this precipitation looked like apodytic stru structures and these apodytes had the properties of dentins. The same way, when we looked at the dentin itself, in the dentin tubules, we noticed that there is a precipitation of crystals. So, knowing this, this means that on the surface of the material itself and its interaction with the dentin, together on the surface and on the bottom of it, we have a um, precipitation crystal which might improve the hermetic seal of these materials, thus eliminating any bacterial infiltration. The second aspect which looks like essential and complementary to what happens is to look at the pulp side. Uh, from the pulp side, what is important is to uh, not only to have a non-toxic material but to have a bioactive material. What is the bioactivity of the material? Is the capacity of a material to induce specific functions in the target tissues. So this is what we investigated with biodentin and its effects on pulp cells. And what we notice is that not only biodentin was not toxic to these cells, but that it induces the mineralization in cell cultures. 
So this was one of the aspects. And when we examined the molecular markers in the cell cultures, we noticed that we have all the markers of odontoblast and in the mineral matrix which is produced in culture, we notice that we have also the markers of the dentin, which means that we are inducing a specific material in culture. However, when this is produced in culture, it doesn't really reproduce a situation in vivo. That's why we evaluated the behavior of this material on a um, tooth culture model, which was um, developed in our lab. This model decreases the use of human teeth or animal teeth, and it provides a model which is very similar to the restorative procedures that we have in vivo. So what we did is that we took the teeth from uh, third molars from patients with their agreement and with the agreement of the ethical, the ethical committees in France, and um, these teeth were prepared with cavities similar to what we can do in vivo, that is dentinal cavity or palpal cavities. They were filled with biodentin and some other comparable materials. And surprisingly, what we notice when we make culture of these teeth over um, one day, two weeks or four weeks, is that biodentin induces early steps, the early steps of mineralization, which means that we have formations of the mineral type in the pulp itself facing the injury and facing biodentin, which means that biodentin was inducing the mineralization in the pulp. In the next step, we wanted to know how does this happen. So we made cell cultures again, and we looked at the expression and the synthesis of growth factors. We noticed that with biodentin, Angiogenic growth factors secretion increases. Not only this, but there is a factor which is very important to dental regeneration, which is TGF beta 1. And surprisingly, whatever the size of the cavity is, when biodentin is applied, there is an induction of TGF beta 1. So, TGF beta 1 is known as a nodotin blast differentiation factor. But in addition to this, we wanted to know what else could TGF beta 1 do. So we made an encapsulation in, um, uh, in a polymer to control its release, which was very progressive and over a two or three weeks period. And we noticed that the release of TGF beta 1 directs the migration of the pulp stem cells towards the injury, which means that wherever you apply Biodentin, it stimulates the secretion of TGF beta 1, and this will stimulate the migration of some cells to, from one side to the wild with one factor which is called FGF2, and direct their migration to the injury side with TGF beta 1, and their differentiation at the injury side that is facing biodentin with TGF beta 1. So you see, uh, TG, um, uh, biodentin seems to be not only to provide a hermetic seal around the material and together with the dentin and even animal interfaces, but also it induces the regenerative capacity of the pulp. And these are the two major requirements to provide a hermetic seal and prevent any future infection of the pulp after the initial restoration. Thank you for your attention.